next talk is very important also uh, in one of the challenges that uh, many of the youth are facing and that is the gap between uh, children and parents, teens and parents and what are the techniques and what are our responsibilities and how can we bridge that gap uh, to make our relationship with our parents and our elders in society to be much more profound and important. So for this I'm inviting uh, Shaykh Mufti Muhammad ibn Adam al-Kawthari Hafizahullah ta'ala uh, He's no stranger to the Islamic Foundation And also Toronto But just a brief introduction uh, Shaykh Mufti Muhammad ibn Adam uh, Is a young traditionally trained scholar Who studied in different parts of the world Born in Leicester, UK And raised under the guidance of his illustrious father Shaykh Mawlana Adam Hafizahullah he started learning about Islam from a very young age and memorized the Holy Quran at a very tender age of nine. He initially studied the Arabic language and, and various other traditional Islamic sciences at Darul Lumbari, United Kingdom, under many shuyukh, notably Sheikh Mulana Muhammad Yusuf Mutala Hafizahullah Ta'ala, and received authorizations in various books, including the six major books of Hadith. He also took part in a one-year course of specialization in the sciences of giving legal verdicts, that is ifta. After graduating, he traveled to Karachi, Pakistan, where he studied under a uh, great living scholar, Justice uh, Mufti Muhammad Taqi Uthmani, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, and others. Later, he traveled to Damascus, Syria, where he increased in experience and knowledge by studying under the great ulama there and received authorizations from the various scholars there. He has written several books and many of his uh, answers to many of the questions appear on the famous website Sunni Path and also his own personal website daruliftah.com. He presently resides in Leicester, UK and alhamdulillah he's also a father now. So uh, with these few words as an introduction, I invite our Sheikh Mufti Muhammad ibn Adam al-Kawthari hafizahullah to inspire us. And once again, a reminder, please, uh, all the brothers that are standing at the back of the prayer hall, please move forward, come inside, be seated, and join the gathering. Jazakumullah. This is the respect to our uh, guest, inshallah. Brothers and sisters are requested to kindly assemble in their designated areas so that, uh, inshallah, we can listen attentively to the, to the scholar. Jazakumullah khairan. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <coughs> وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا وأسوتنا وقائدنا محمد عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وصحابته أجمعين وعلى كل من تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما سبحانك اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه وبعد <coughs> Respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Once again it's an honor and a privilege to be here with you in Canada, Toronto Islamic Foundation of Toronto at this Youth Tarbiya Conference. And I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your efforts for coming here and the efforts and the endeavors of the organizers. May Allah accept all those people who've had some sort of uh, say in the preparation and the organization of this conference. My topic is actually, and I'm going to try to make it a bit informal, it's to do with children and parents. 
And I'm not just talking about young children, but I'm talking about children, young children, as well as uh, mature children, even grown-up children, and parents, and not just young parents, but even elderly parents. parents. The re relationship and the tie, ties and the kinship between parents and children, this gap that we find ourselves in. And seriously, we, have, we live in a time now where generally relationships, the ties of kinship, and relationships are not maintained and specifically between parents and children many times what happens we live we live in a household it's just for the sake of it sometimes it's like you were lodging in a house the parents the father comes and does his thing the mother comes she does her thing the son comes does his thing the daughter comes in the house and does her thing it's just individuals whereas Islamically we are encouraged we are ordered we are commanded that we should live as a family and especially this relationship there is so much emphasis we find in the Quran and Sunnah extreme amount of emphasis laid upon kinship and specifically about parents and children and generally the whole issue of mu'ashara social laws, social etiquettes, we find the Qur'an goes into extreme detail talking about mu'ashara and social etiquettes. The Qur'an normally we find is very limited in terms of explaining the rules of salat and zakat and hajj but when it comes to social etiquettes, when it comes to how to live with your fellow family members and how to live with your relations and with your relatives, with your cousins, with your you know, extended family, with people around you, then the Qur'an goes into extreme detail and generally hukuk and the rights of our relations are greatly emphasized upon in the Quran and unfortunately despite this being greatly emphasized we live in a time where ties are not maintained there's a massive gap between parents and children there's a massive gap and we all you know we, we, we have an excuse the parents have an excuse that you know we live in busy times we don't have time you know the highway in Toronto it's like takes you two hours to go home and work and nobody has time we don't even have a meal together as a family on a daily basis maybe once a week and that's even sometimes there needs to be a bond between parents and children parents need to realize parents need to learn that there are rights for their children and likewise children need to understand and realize and know that they have extreme amount of reverence and rights that they need to give for their parents and this is greatly emphasized in the Quran in terms of the parents the Quran is filled with verses the hadith the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam we find numerous amounts of uh, hadiths that talk about the rights of parents treating them well honoring them being kind to them being considered towards them taking care of them serving them and again you know this is another problem as well you know seriously this some this notion is setting within the some of the muslims and it's come from the non muslims that you know your parents they just like new, normal human beings, what big deal, they're just your parents, they're humans, we're humans, so what? And I've actually heard this from one young brother, they're my parents, okay, you know, it was an accident and Allah made them my parents, what else, There's nothing else. Islamically, parents have a great right over you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have made your parents a external means of you and I coming into this world parents are superior children are inferior seriously keep this in mind parents have been given this right over the children Islamically parents are given preference they, they are they are the leaders of, of the household and they're superior to the children and this is greatly seen in the Quran we see many verses and many hadith like for example the famous verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا سورة الإسراء إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرْ أَوْ أَحَدُهُمَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ your Lord has decreed أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ do not worship anyone besides him just remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here in this particular verse, He is mentioning the worship of Himself, Tawheed and oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tawheed, Allah ta'abudu illa iyyah, wa bil walidayni ihsana. Your Lord has decreed, do not worship anyone besides Him. And then your Lord has decreed, He has commanded you. 
to be gentle, to be kind, to be considerate and caring towards your parents. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Tawheed of Allah, worshipping of Allah has been mentioned side by side, has been mentioned next to looking after your parents, being careful, uh, considerate towards them, and being kind towards them and serving them. And then what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرِ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا if one of them, whether your mother or whether your father, or even both of them, one of them or both of them, in your lifetime, if they attain, if they reach old age, if they become old, one of them or both of them, then what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us a few commands. He says, look, first two are negative things. He says, don't do these things. Don't even say the word uff. Now this is an Arabic word. It really means don't even say a word of contempt. Nothing as minute as saying, you know, like in English we might say something like, you know, or don't take, you know, don't, don't just say, you know, like sometimes parents tell you, sometimes the father says, go and do this. Oh no man, you know, you're telling me to. Even that, Allah says, don't even do that. فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا uff. Nothing. And, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions his, that, remember, this is generally the case, whether your parents are 28 or 35 or 40 or 50 or 60, whatever. But, إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرِ The reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned old age here is because normally, generally, you know, your parents, they become, they become a bit unreasonable when they're, young, when they're old. It's natural. You know, you are created, Allah creates us with da'af. We are mentally unstable, we are in need of other people when we're young, when we're babies, when we're children. We grow up, we go up the hill and we go down the hill. It's going back. It's like, you know, the example I've given a few times. I don't know, if, do, you know do you guys know what log film is? Do, do, do you have these, you know, um, theme parks? In, in England, we have these theme parks, we have a log film. It's really, a really good, you know, ride. It's like a small boat. You go up, okay, and then you go, and then you go down, a sudden dip. Do, what do you call that here? Do you have this? You have a... Re in Canada? Canada's Wonderland. So maybe you can go there and check it out. You know, you go up and then there's a sudden dip. Seriously, that's life. That's life. You know when you're growing old, you're going up, 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 up. And now, nowadays the average is like 60. So you go up, 30, and then you're going down. When you're 31, you're not 31, you're 29. 28, 27, you're going down. And sometimes you just take a leap, you know, sudden down. That's life, seriously, a small, you know, 50, 60 years average. Average is like 50, 55 nowadays. So when your parents become old, Allah says, you have to look after your parents generally anyway. But when they're old, they become like children. They'll agitate you. They'll, they'll ask for unreasonable things. They'll just they'll generally be, you know, unreasonable and inappropriate towards you. They won't be nice sometimes to you. Have sabr. Allah is saying, look, even in that case, in that situation, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَّ أُفْ Do not even, even say a word of contempt. Nothing. وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَ Don't rebuke them. Don't harm them in any way. And then Allah says, these two things do not do. Don't say uff. Don't rebuke them. Don't slander them. Don't swear at them. Don't say bad things to them. The hadith says, whoever curses their parents, Allah curses them. A child who curses, uh, Allah's curse is on the one who curses his parents. So don't do none of that. And what should you do? Allah tells us. Say to them a gentle word. In, speak to them in a gentle, nice, polite way. That's the way of addressing your parents. In a gentle way. And then Allah says, Lower to them. Be lower to them the wing of janaha dhulli, of humility, meaning be humble. Be humble towards your parents. When you talk to your parents, look up to them. Be humble. Give them the position, give them the rank, give them the status, give them that high maqam that Allah has given them over you. وَاخْفِضْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الظُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ وَقُلْ رَبِّ ارْحَمْهُمَا And this is a beautiful dua that all of us should make. وَقُلْ رَبِّ ارْحَمْهُمَا And say, 
Oh my Lord, have mercy on my parents. Irhamhuma. Kama Rabbayani Sagira. This is this have mercy on them due to the fact that they looked after me when I was young. When I was a baby, when I was a child, when I was in need of them, I was helpless. I mean, when children are babies, imagine, you know, they're helpless. It's parents bringing you up. And then, when they grow old, they need you. So, this is payment time. You need to look after your parents. Your parents, I'm talking to the children, remember, I'm going to talk to their parents as well. But your, your parents, you were crying in the middle of the night. You woke up 25 times in the middle of the night when you were a three-month-old baby. Your mother still woke up and gave breastfed you and gave you bottle milk. Your mother had to change your nappies like 10 times a day, 20 times a day. Still, no complaint. And now they're old. You, if you have to do certain things for your parents, you must do them. This, this is the basic that you can do. This is the basic haq and right that we owe to our parents. Now there's a story mentioned, you must have heard this story, it's a famous story, some of the scholars have mentioned, I don't know how true it is. But they say that there was this person sitting, you know, there was this old man who had reached old age, very old. And he was in the garden and, and his son was, you know, he, he studied and this and that and he came back. And one day he was sitting in the garden with his young uh, 30 year old son. So his dad was old, you know, in his 70s, 80s. So he said, son, you know, a crow came and sat on the tree. He said, son, you know, what's that on that tree? He said, oh, that looks like a crow. After 10 seconds, son, what's that on the tree? I said, I think, yeah, it's a crow. After a few seconds again, son, what's that on the tree? I told you it's a crow. Fourth time again, well, son, what's that on the tree? Don't you my head, man. I'm telling you, I've told you, dad. You know, how many times are you going to ask me? I, can you hear, dad? You know, it's crow. Five times. So the dad, he heard this, he got angry at the father. After two, three minutes, he went inside the house and he came back with a diary. And he took the diary out and he went and he turned the pages to about 30 years back and said, look, son, read this. He read it in 19 such and such. My son was four years, three years old in the same garden. He asked me, there's a crow came onto that tree and asked me 25 times, dad, what is this? And I told him 25 times, this is a crow. Imagine, you know, as a son, that you know, you couldn't tell your father five times that this was a crow. The father, 25 times, each time. You know, beta, son, oh my beloved son, ya bunaya, this, this is a crow. And he was taking pleasure in telling his son. This is the right that we owe our parents, young people, seriously. Don't, you know, if you've done any of these things, seek forgiveness. If you've, you know, hurt their feelings, Seek forgiveness. And I'll tell you, sometimes, you know, a lot of the brothers say, that, well, but our parents, like, they're, they're oppressive, and they're like this, and they're like that. And I'm going to talk about that as well. And time is very short. But, you know, there's a hadith which Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his al-adab al-mufrad. When I saw this hadith, you know, he's mentioned, it's from Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu, where he said that the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, uh, he says that, it's under the chapter, Babu Birr al wa in Dalamahu. The chapter regarding being good to your parents, even if they are oppressive. Even if they are oppressive and they harm you, still you be good to them. Under that title, uh, under the chapter heading. And then he brings the hadith where the message, where the Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas relates. It's, a, it's the statement of Abdullah ibn Abbas, which he understood from the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, مَا مِنْ مُسْلِمٍ لَهُ وَالِدَانِ مُسْلِمَانِ يُسْبِحُ إِلَيْهِمَا مُحْتَسِبًا no child, no son, no daughter who wakes up in the morning, begs good, serves his parents with the hope of reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then if he does that, two doors of Jannah and paradise open for him. And then the hadith says, وَإِن كَانَ وَاحِدٌ فَوَاحِدٌ Even if, it's one, if you have one parent alive and you be good to them each morning, the door of paradise opens for you. وَإِنْ أَغْضَبَ أَحَدَهُمَا لَمْ يَرْضَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ حَتَّى يَرْضَ عَنْهُ The hadith says that if he, if he you know, harmed or if he uh, caused his parents to be displeased and they were displeased for him, from him, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his Lord and Creator is displeased from him until he does not go and make his parents happy. And then, you know, the main part of this hadith, what I want to tell you, look, somebody asked, he said, وَإِن ظَلَمَاهُ If his parents are displeased, unhappy, 
Your Allah will not be happy until you you don't go and please your parents. Somebody asked, what about wa in dalamahu? Even if his parents were oppressive, even if they committed dhulm, even if they were oppressive and suppressive, even if they you know did not give his rights, the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the hadith, which is from Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said, wa in dalamahu. Even if your parents are oppressive, remember, brothers and sisters. Parents, Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them this rank and position. They have been, Allah, you know, Allah has made them an external means of us coming into this world. That in itself is a great rank and position for them. This is not a transaction. You know when you be good to your parents, it's not a transaction. It's not like, dad, if you're good to me, I'll be good to you. Mom, if you're good to me, I'll be, it's not a trans- you're, not, you're not buying and selling anything here. It's not like, you know, your payback time. You have to, whether they're good or bad, if they are bad, that's between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have to answer for whatever they do in the akhirah, they'll be punished for it, whatever is between them and Allah. But as a son, as a daughter, we have a responsibility. Regardless, that doesn't mean, I'm not saying you just you know, take all the oppression and all the punishment and that's it, and you don't have a right to defend yourself, you, can, you just get yourself killed. No, that's not what I'm saying. You have a right to avoid harm from yourself, without a doubt. But... Remember, even if they are being oppressive, then they deserve this right. Just for the mere fact that they were used as a means by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your existence, for you coming into this world. Simple, simple fact. It's not a transaction. Whether they are good or not, you don't wait for that. And seriously, you know in this world, anything that we do, with anyone, the general principle, and remember this brothers and sisters, this is a very important principle. The general principle of relationships, you know why we have too many problems in the society and conflicts and quarrels and disputes and argumentation and, and breaking of ties? i tell you one major reason and the, the major remedy for it. The main reason is that we expect too much. We expect, we do things with the wrong intention, we expect people to do things for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Islam tells us we have this golden word, ihtisab. Ihtisab mean, means we do whatever we do for the sake of Allah, for the pleasure of Allah. That's the intention. We don't want anything. You're good to your parents for the sake of Allah. You're good to your children for the sake of Allah. You're good to your spouse, your husband, your wife. It's for the sake of Allah. Whether they are good to me or not, that doesn't matter. If someone's good back to me, that's a bonus. Alhamdulillah, subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. It's great. I didn't expect it. But alhamdulillah, it's good. If I, if I don't get anything in return, fine. If we live our lives like that, seriously, we'll have a better society. And, and you know when you don't expect anything, you'll be happy as well. And I've mentioned this on many occasions, you'll be happy. Because you will never be sad because you were not expecting anyone to do anything for you anyway. So, you know, if you don't expect anything, and then that person did not come and do whatever, whatever, that's it, you'll never be sad, you'll be a happy person. Remember this golden rule. So anyway, parents here, we must look after them. They are our means of entering Jannah and Paradise. Sahih Muslim, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, رَغِمَ أَنفُهُ ثُمَّ رَغِمَ أَنفُهُ ثُمَّ رَغِمَ أَنفُهُ Let that person be humbled in dust. Who? He said, man, you know, the one who uh, found and who, who man أَدْرَكَ بَوَيْهِ عِنْدَ الْكِبَرِ Who found his parents in an old age. فَلَمْ يَدْخُلَ الْجَنَّةِ and he was not able to enter paradise, this person is in great loss. Because it's very easy, if you find yourself in a situation where you, are, you have parents who are old, then it's one of the simplest and the easiest ways of entering paradise and Jannah. Seriously, one of the easiest ways of entering paradise. You have to serve them, you look after them, make khidma of them, serve them, be kind to them, be gentle to them, don't harm them in any way, shape or form, have a lot of sabr and patience, that's your ticket to Jannah, that's your ticket to paradise. And, and so there are a lot of, you know, and loads of hadith and texts, just one verse I mentioned. And, and we know many stories, you know the famous story for Uwais al-Qarni, you must have heard of his story, Uwais al-Qarni, radiallahu anhu, and I don't want to mention it because time's short. He left the... <laughs> position and, and he, he left this great rank of being a companion of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the simple reason of looking after his mother he was alive in the time of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he was living in Yemen in a place called Qarm and he actually sent a message to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said you know what I want to come and visit you imagine <laughs> you know subhanallah just imagine being a sahabi a companion the Messenger and he said, Ya Rasulullah, Messenger of Allah, he never saw him, the message was sent, I have an old mother, 
that she needs me, that I look after her, but I want to come and visit you. If it was someone like us, you know, when would you ever get the chance of visiting the Messenger of Allah? You know, we go to Hajj and Umrah. You know, when once in a time, you know, our parents, we don't even care, we go all over the place, we think we're doing good Islamic works, ask, go and ask someone. Even going in the path of Allah, if your parents are not happy, there's a ruling there. Go and ask a shaykh, go and ask a mufti, go and ask an alim, go and ask the imam of the mosque. Can I go and seek knowledge? Can I go in the path of Allah? Can I do this? Can I do that? If your parents are not happy, you can't. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, somebody came and asked the Messenger of Allah, I want to go for jihad in the path of Allah. He said, do not you, you, you have abawani hayyan? Do you have your parents alive? He said, yes. Do they need you? He said, yes. Fafihima fajahid. Your reward of jihad is in looking after your parents. And one said, I'm traveling in the path of Allah, I'm going out, my parents are crying. He said, go back to your parents, adhikhuma, make them smile, kama abkaitahuma, like you made them cry, go and make them smile. So there are rules, even if your parents are non-Muslims. وَإِنْ جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكْ بِمَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفَةً even if you, they are non-Muslims, if they are polytheists, if they don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says in the Quran, وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفَةً Be good to them, considerate towards them in this world. Don't obey them, of course. You can't, if they force you to leave Islam, you can't obey them. And then there's a ruling about obedience, which I'll probably talk about anyway. So, seriously, young people, these are great rights our parents have. Layinul kalam, be gentle. You know when you talk, Sayyiduna Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he, he mentions you know, uh, um, that uh, um, he saw once a person walking with someone. He said, he said to him, he said, Ma hadha minka? Who's, who's this guy with you? He said, Hadha Abi, this is my father. He said, He's your father? Then he said, La tu sammihi bi ismihi. Don't call your dad by his name. This is not a cultural thing. This is Sayyiduna, Abdullah, uh, Sayyiduna Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu saying, La tu sammihi bi ismihi. Remember, give him that respect. Yes, he is your friend. Parents need to be friends with children, but they do have that degree above. Seriously, this is the Islamic understanding, whatever anybody else tells you. لا تسميه بإسمه ولا تمشي أمامه Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him. He said to him, he said, don't walk ahead of your father. You're walking in the masjid, behind your father, let your father, let your father exit the masjid, enter the masjid, open the door for him, let the father enter first. لا تمشي أمامه Don't walk ahead of him ولا تجلس قبله When you come to a gathering Abu Hurairah رضي الله عنه says Don't sit down before him Let him sit first Then you sit These are the rights for our parents Seriously we live in a time Where all these things You know One by one We're losing them We make dua for our parents That's a great duty Like the hadith The, the verse of the Quran وَقُلْ رَبِّ ارْحَمْهُمَا there are many du'as, seriously, many du'as, like the prophets made, Allah mentions them in the Quran, like, you know, رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَيَّ This is a right as well, but this famous du'a, we should all remember, memorize, if you don't know, you know, seriously, memorize it now, ask someone and take it out, it's in the Quran, قُرْ رَبِّ ارْحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّ يَانِ صَغِيرًا And I'll mention something else, you know Sayyiduna Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه, you know his habit was, he used to live, with his mother, he used to love his mother. And his mother used to live in the next room. Every day when he used to exit his house, he used to, when he used to leave to go out to work or teach or study or whatever, he used to go to his mother's door, outside the mother's door, and he used to say, Assalamu alaikum ya ummatah wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh my beloved mother, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So she used to say from inside, Wa alaikum assalam ya bunayya wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh my beloved son, Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And then Sayyiduna Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu used to say, رَحِمَكِ اللَّهُ رَحِمَكَ اللَّهُ كَمَا رَبَّيْتَنِي صَغِيرًا Oh my mother, Allah have mercy on you as you, because of you, you, you brought me up and cherished me when I was young. You know the verse of the Quran, رَبِّ ارْحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبِّيْنِي يعني صَغِيرًا رَحِمَكِ اللَّهُ كَمَا رَبَّيْتَنِي صَغِيرًا Allah have mercy on you because of the fact that you cherished me, you nourished me, you brought me up when I was young. And she used to respond by saying from inside, رَحِمَكَ اللَّهُ كَمَا بَرَرْتَنِي كَبِيرًا Allah have mercy on you as you are very considerate, kind and caring towards me when I'm old. Every day. And when he used to return, again, door of the mother, same thing again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And the same thing he used to repeat. This is in the Al-Adab al-Mufrad of Imam al-Bukhari, رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَرَضِيَ عَنُهُ 
So there are many rights and responsibilities. And seriously, if anybody has, dis, uh, uh, has um, harmed or upset their parents, today, go and seek forgiveness. If, if, you're, if you're here with your parents right now, after my talk, seriously, please, go and say, Dad, please forgive me. And seek forgiveness and make a firm intention, resolution, never, never to do anything, regardless of what they do or what they're, what they're up to, whether they give your rights to you or not. That's their job and responsibility that I will, I'm talking about right now. But seriously, seek forgiveness. If you've got time right now, if your parents are alive, a lot of people, they don't have that time. They don't have that opportunity. They don't have that chance because they, they realize too late. The parents have left this world. And then they... You know, when your parents leave this world, that's when you think, oh, you know what, I, I, I didn't serve my parents, I didn't look after them, I didn't take care of them, I wasn't considerate towards them, I was very bad to them. I mean, some people, seriously, they, let alone serving them, they, they, there are people who don't even talk for months and years. I, I just cannot understand how somebody cannot even speak. They can't be on speaking terms with their own parents. A'udhu Billah, how can that, that ever be happen? You know, some people, seriously, they don't talk to their, you know, real parents. Not even step, real parents. Because of what? Because of a conflict they had about some few dollars. Seriously, there's a case that came to me, a brother came and there was, it's about like three, four hundred pounds issue or something. The son and the father, they have not been on speaking terms for like two years. Because of four hundred pounds. I said, you know what, just talk, I'll give you four hundred pounds. Seriously, four hundred pounds. Two years, no conversation, no talking, breaking of time. Ties, which is qati'atul rahim, one of the greatest sins. La yadkhulul jannata qati'ur rahim. The one who breaks ties, the hadith says, shall never enter, shall not enter paradise. La yadkhulul jannata qati'ur rahim. So don't realize this when your parents leave this world, because then it's too late. But even then, it's not too, too late. It's too late, but it's not too, too late. Do you understand? It's too late, but not too, too late. There are, re there are ways of, of, of addressing this and correcting this, even if your parents don't think, if your parents have gone, then you still have certain ways, like the ulama mentioned, make, uh, send rewards, re recite some Quran, do good deeds, recite rak'at of nafil, isal thawab, send rewards to them, make dua for them. There's a hadith as well about this, that, uh, you know, a dua ulahuma wal istighfar ulahuma, make istighfar for them. Somebody came and asked the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Ya Rasulullah, my parents have passed away. What can I do to benefit them? He said, make dua for them. Supplicate for them. Seek forgiveness from Allah for them. ahdihima. And if they were intending and wanting to do certain things, fulfill those desires of theirs. They wanted to probably like you know give someone money or build a building or wanted to do something in their lifetime and they were not able to do so, do that for them. And number four, he said, or number three, he said, ikaramu sadiqihima. Honor their friends. That's a way of honoring your parents if they've left this world. So, there are many rights and responsibilities, and, and you know, seriously, we need to, uh, uh, if our parents are alive, serve them, get the dua from them. You know, their dua is accepted. One of the three duas, da'watul musafir, da'watul walidain li awladihima, and uh, da'watul mazloom, thalathu da'watin mustajabin la shakka lahunna. Three types of dua, they accept it, and they shall never be rejected by Allah. One is the dua, the supplication of the father or the mother, parents for the children. And likewise, you know, the fair parents all here, they're really happy and, you know, thinking, but parents, your turn, now it's your turn. I can see the old people, you know, they're, they're loving it. But remember, my, you know, old friends, Islam, everything comes in a package. Some parents, the only verses they know and learn of the Qur'an is وَقَدَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا Every time they know like all these verses and hadiths. It's, it's, some parents actually forget and even realize that children have rights. Seriously, some parents really forget. They just think, that's, I'm, the father, I'm the boss. That's it. I'm, I'm the big fat boss, you know, the cruel one. So whatever I do, that's it goes. It's my rule, my kingdom, you know. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the boss and, and the commander in chief and the dictator here. It's not like that. There is so much emphasis in the Fil Qurani wa Sunnati about children, about, about valuing children. Seriously, children, we need to value them. If you don't value your children, you'll never be able to give them their rights. Children have been given to us as a trust, as a amana from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to preserve them. 
Allah has given, ask those people who don't have children, what they will do or give to have children. It's an aman and trust from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, they must be treated well, seriously. They must be given absolute and immense love. Absolute, immense love. You know, they deserve the most love from of you. Good treatment, being gentle towards them, being merciful towards them, being absolutely tender towards them, giving consideration to their comfort. And I know young children, when their children are young, parents normally do that. But even when they grow up a bit, always being, give them time. Share quality time with them, with your, with your children. Take an interest in what they do, what they study at the mosque or the college or the university or whatever they are. Participate in the activities. And seriously, young people at that age, they need, they want love, they crave. You know, young teenagers at that time, for, this is for my you know, older friends, they crave for love, they crave for attention, they crave for tenderness. They, they, they want someone to help them. They crave for assistance and for guidance. And you know what? If they don't get it at home, what will happen? They go outside. They search for it outside. And then when they search for it outside, and they go into the wrong hands, and then we're the ones who complain. My son, my daughter left the path of Islam. My son has been deviated. My daughter's done this, and my son's gone there and astray and this and that. Don't blame except your own self. If you didn't have time as a father, as a mother for your own son or daughter because you were too busy you know, doing business and making money, what, what benefit is in making money if you don't have the time to even spend with your child, with your son or a daughter? Seriously. This, this, this is what young children, they need. They need the love and attention. We must really seriously give them that love and attention. We should always never, never... You know, there are books written on this topic, and I'll mention a couple of books at the end for you to read, but um, there are books written especially for parents. I'll mention it now. There's a really good book, Ideal Mother, Ideal Father. I don't know if you've seen it. I don't know if they sell it here. I'm not selling it. I don't have a stall there. Don't worry, I'm not, you know. It's, but there might be some stall here. In Urdu, it's been translated into English. It's really good. Seriously, I've read both. Ideal Mother for the mothers and Ideal Father for the fathers. I've read both of them. The, Amazing books. It teaches you as a parent how to look after your sons, how to look after your daughters, how to, how to address them, how not to be always angry and always swearing at them and slandering them. They're like thinking that they're some kind of you know, a worker or a, ser a server to you. They're not, they're not there to serve you all the time. Don't, you know, not slandering them, not swearing at them, not, not talking to them in a way that they, they, they are useless. You know when that happens when we talk to our young children and they feel, they get this inferiority complex. They feel they, they actually start feeling that they are useless. They are no good. That's it. Nobody wants them in the society. And what they do? They rebel. And sometimes in the worst case scenario, they, they commit suicide. That's the main, one of the main reasons why suicide is committed by young people. Because they feel useless. Because at home, p people, everybody used to discard them. Everybody used to think you're useless. Especially when someone's not too bright. They need extra attention, care, and love from the family, from the grandparents. Look at the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He used to love children. Amazing amount of love and tenderness and care and kindness and gentleness the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would show towards young people. There are a hadith filled. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, even addressing them. The Quran talks about how. The other prophets would address their sons. They would say, Ya Bunayya, Ya Bunayya, la tadkhulu min babin wahid, wa tadkhulu min abwabin mutafarriqa. Ya Bunayya, la tushrik billah, inna shirka la dhulmun azim. Ya Bunayya, aqimi salah. Oh my beloved son. That's the way, that's the way to address, address your children. Just like addressing your parents in a good way, even with children. So anyway, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, numerous hadiths, in this Musnad of Imam Ahmed, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Yasufu Abdullah wa Ubaidullah wa Ubaidullah wa Kathiram min Bani uh, Al Abbas. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to you know, line up small children. He used to love children, so he used to line them up. Abdullah, Ubaidullah, and all these other children from the tribe of Banu Abbas. He used to line them all up and then he used to say, he used to stand at a dis distance and he would say, Man sabaqa ilayya falahu kadha. 
Come on, who's going to come to me first? Whoever comes to me first, I'll give him this or I'll give him that. And all the children, they used to rush and hurry and run to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَيَسْبِقُونَ عَلَيْهِ إِلَيْهِ وَيَقَعُونَ عَلَى ظَهْرِهِ وَصَدْرِهِ They used to come, fall onto his back and, and on his chest. فَيُقَبِّلُهُمْ وَيَلْتَزِبُهُمْ The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would kiss each one of them. He would hold them tight. And this is with just general children, with his own grandchildren, Hassan and Hussein radiallahu anhum. Many hadith. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once he held the hands of Hassan and Hussein, you know, one of, one of his grandsons, both by, by the palm of the hand. And he was lying, lying on the ground, and he made them sit, you know. Their feet was on his feet, so he was lying back. Okay, and then they were standing, and then he said to them, you know, irqa, climb up, irqa, climb up. So they climbed, climbed, you know, all the way until their feet was on his chest, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hassan was standing on the chest of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa And when he came to him, he said, If tahfaka, open your mouth. And then he kissed him on his mouth, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He used to kiss his young grandchildren. This is one of the sunnah. We've, many times we have forgotten the sunnah of kissing. Kissing our children, kissing our parents. Young children, when you go home, go and kiss the hands of your, of your father, of your mother, kiss the forehead. It shows love, affection and mercy. And likewise, you know, um, parents show this tenderness and this love. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the famous hadith of... Uh, whenever he would go and visit his daughter, this is his daughter, grown-up daughter, who was married. When he would visit his daughter, who was it? Who was his grown-up daughter married? Fatima radiallahu anha. Whenever he would go, she would stand up. Sayyidah Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. She would stand up kiss the hands of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and make him sit on her seat. And whenever she would go and visit her father, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would stand up. Sometimes people say, you can't stand up for others. Subhanallah. They say it's bid'ah. You know, how can that be a bid'ah? And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam standing up. He stood up for his own daughter, kissed, he would kiss her hands and then make her sit on the you know, main place of his, his own position, his own place. His own daughter, that's the way to show your love, even towards your daughters who have married off, your sons. This, this is what we call harmony, this is what we call peace, this is what we call a tranquil society. And then you, the results are far-reaching, because then it helps the whole community. And you are able to do more effective works for, for, the, for the humanity, for the society at large. But if we're busy all the time fighting, quarreling, arguing, this, that and the other, and she said this and he said that, and he was saying this and she was saying that, and she was gossiping and she was backbiting, and she, then that's it. We don't have time for it. We don't have a time to read a book because every time you're on the phone, especially sisters, sorry sisters, you know, but sisters have this you know, habit, sometimes long conversations for two hours, three hours, four hours, just doing nothing except backbiting. And sometimes brothers as well, they do other kinds of sins more common within the brothers, but this is a quite common sin in the sisters. And you know in England, we have all these free minutes. 100 minutes, 1000 now, like you get on your cell phones, mobile phones or cell phones, I mean kind of cell phones. You have all these minutes. 1000 minutes, I call them 1000 free backbiting minutes. That's, that's what it is. Wastage of time, one the, gossiping, talking about the whole world except your own self. This is all problems in the society. Be efficient. Look after your time. Read books. Do something effective for the community. Study Islam. Help humanity. Serve the community. Do something beneficial. So this was a messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He would kiss Hassan, Hussein radiallahu anhuma, and many others he would kiss sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There was once where a villager came to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, إِنَّكُمْ تُقَبِّلُونَ سَبِيَانَكُمْ وَلَا نُقَبِّلُهُمْ You know, you, we see you guys, you kiss your children. We don't do that. He said, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, أَوَ أَمْلِكْ أَنْ نَزَعَ اللَّهُ مِنْ قَلْبِكَ الرَّحْمَةِ What can I do if Allah has taken away mercy from your heart? Tough luck. You don't have mercy. We have mercy in our hearts. Another time somebody asked, said, he saw the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kissing Hassan and Hussein. Aqra bin Habis was sitting by the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, I have ten of these and I've never kissed one of them ever in my life. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَن لَا يَرْحَمْ لَا يُرْحَمْ The one who does not show mercy, Allah will not show mercy unto him. This is the mercy. If you want Allah's mercy towards you, you need to show that rahmah and that, that mercy to, to, to your children. So, and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has never, it's never been reported that he's, uh, he ever smacked or abused or hit his ch children. 
his daughters or his grandchildren or anyone. This is a hadith documented. But that doesn't mean that you have, you can't, you never know. You never like uh, uh, be, uh, you know, not aggressive. But you, 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 that doesn't mean that you just always show them extra, extreme love despite them doing anything or whatever, and even doing things that are unlawful and taking wrong paths and having bad habits and lying and things like that. No, without a doubt, when they when they commit mistakes and errors, as a murabbi, as a father, you have that duty. But remember, there are ways of correcting, and that's why I read that book. Ideal father, it teaches you how as a father you correct in light of the guidance of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how you correct the mistakes of your young children. How not to, you know, when they're doing something wrong, don't go behind their back and give them a smack. Don't do that. Don't talk to them then. Remember, never do anything out of anger. If you're angry as a father, the guidance is that don't don't say anything. Wait until your anger cools down. Then in a nice, gentle way, you know, advise them with love and affection. They'll listen to you. Give them, you know, sometimes like the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, once somebody he made a mistake and he came rushing, hasting, hurrying into the masjid of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and then he started, you know, praying salah, you know, like outside the mosque, and then whilst he was praying, he came and slowly, and then he came and joined in. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he sm- smiled at him, explained to him in a very gentle way, and then he said, Zadakallahu hirsan wa la ta'ud. I, I completely understand, you really have this eagerness of joining the jama'ah and doing something good. It's really, really good. But don't do this because this is not appropriate. Just walk until you come to the Saf and then pray. Like that, if your son has done something wrong, if there's something positive, talk about the positive and then just correct that wrong thing. Don't, don't, you know, there are ways of, of correcting the mistakes committed by your children and the bad habits they have with love, with affection. It will have an impact on them rather than being angry and slapping them and hitting them and rebuking them and swearing at them. When they swear, then we get angry. Because why do they swear? Because I've learned it from the parents. You know, there was this one father, his, his kid is swearing and he's swearing. He said, don't swear and he's swearing at him. His, his kid was playing with, you know, his uh, friends outside and he was swearing. And the father sitting inside the house and he's telling him, I've told you so many times not to swear. And he's swearing at the same time. Ex- lead by example. Lead by example. وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاسْتَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا Allah says that you, if you, I mean, you can't expect your son not to smoke if you're there smoking with a cigar in your mouth. So you know what, don't smoke, yeah? <sighs> don't smoke. You, you got a cigarette in your mouth and you're telling your child not to smoke? He's never going to stop smoking. So we have to lead by example. If you want our sons and children to offer salah, we have to offer salah. We have to be good Muslims. So, so these are the rights of parents, seriously. And then, you know, there's, there's so much mentioned, you know, to be just. As a father and as a mother, as parents, and this is even, we have young people who have young children, and it's for them as well. When your children slightly, when they grow up and when, when they reach, they're going to grow up very soon. You, we have to be just. We have to be just towards them. This is one of the very important rights that we owe. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, اِعْدِلُوا بَيْنَ أَوْلَادِكُمْ Be just amongst, amongst your, um, your children. It's one of the greatest and one of the grave crimes and one of the greatest of sins for parents to be unjust, for parents to prefer one son over the other, one child over the other. اِتَّقُوا اللَّهَ فِي أَوْلَادِكُمْ اِعْدِلُوا بَيْنَ أَوْلَادِكُمْ Nu'man bin Bashir رضي الله تعالى عنه May Allah be pleased with him, one of the Sahabi companion. He came to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, you know, I've given one of this, my son, I've given him a gift. I want you to be a witness. He said, Have you given all your other kids the same gift? He said, No, Ya Rasulullah. He said, Then go, I don't want to become a witness on your giving of this gift. Why? He said, Because la ashhadu ala jawrin. Because I am never a witness to, to oppression to oppression. This is oppression. You give one a gift, give the other one the gift. Don't start praising one son. One's clever, you always praising him. Oh, this you go to someone's house, my son, and you always praise the other one. The other one's gonna feel, you know, left out. He's going to become, he'll have this condition of inferiority complex. And that's why then he'll, in society, he will rebel against the society. Don't prefer, and especially not, you know, this issue of preferring the son over the daughter. I don't know where that's come from. That's got nothing whatsoever to do with Islam. Nothing whatsoever. It's pre-Islamic Arabia in the days of ignorance. When they used to bury their young children, daughters alive. وَإِذَا بُشِّرَ أَحَدُهُمْ بِالْأُنْثَى ظَلَّ وَجْهُهُ مُسْوَدًّا وَهُوَ كَظِيمٌ يَتَوَارَى مِنَ الْقَوْمِ مِنْ سُوءِ مَا بُشِّرَ بِهِ 
ayumsikuhu ala hunin am yadusuhu fi turab ala sa'a ma yahkumu no time for translation that's pre-islamic arabia ignorance young daughters preferring sons over over daughters allah says yahabu liman yasha'u inatha wa yahabu liman yasha'u dhukur allah gives some people sons some people daughters never as a young parent be despondent never be sad if you have young if you have daughters rather you know abdullah ibn mubarak somebody came to me and said you know my i have a daughter he said if don't any mother or father who have daughters first in their house they are mubarak they have blessings in their house al anbiya abaul banat all the prophets they were fathers of daughters look at the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam four daughters you know they, were, they had daughters all the prophets of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala some some people you know oh, subhanallah this one issue came to me where the husband was so angry this man crazy man i call him a crazy person i, I don't know where his brain's gone he's actually threatening his to divorce his wife because she's only conceiving daughters seriously this is in england he's just he's threatening some people get angry it's is it your wife's fault that you only have daughters of course not those you know in in uh, pre islamic arabia there was this person called abu hamza not the terrorist abu hamza we've had recently in the news but there was another person called abu hamza and i don't know if he is one or not by the way um he was very angry because his wife would only give birth to daughters so he became very angry and he said you know what i'm going to separate you i'm living in another house so after a few months living in another house one day he was passing by his wife's you know house so she saw him and she's read a few lines of poetry she said ma bi li abi hamza la ya'tina yadhillu fil bayt alladhi yalina what's wrong with abu hamza he doesn't come to us What's wrong to my husband? What's wrong with him? لا يأتينا. He doesn't come to us. يظل في البيت الذي يلينا. He lives in the house which is next to us. غضبان ألا نلد البنينا. Is he angry because we don't give? I don't give birth to any sons. تالله ما ذاك في أيدينا. By Allah, that's not even that's not in our hands. And then she said, وإنا لنحن وإنا نحن كالأرض لذراعينا. We're just like a land for people to cultivate, for my husband to cultivate. tambutu ma tadru'uhu fina whatever you cultivate it grows it's your seed that you're growing in into the land so blame your own self as a husband so this injustice towards daughters one of the greatest and greatest of crimes seriously and then there are many rights of i'm going to conclude but there are many rights like you know giving them halal food in the house as parents halal spending on them we spend but we need to spend halal on them bring halal income within the household spend on them feed them your children they deserve it and and do it for the sake of allah to please allah it's not like an investment that let me invest my money when they when when i'm old they'll return it back you know it's like a business deal it's not a business deal it's for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the greatest responsibility and that's it i could do another talk on this is a separate topic is islamic upbringing tarbiya of our children as parents ya ayyuhalladhina amanu qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara wa quduha an-nas wal hijara effort put put in the effort behind them work tirelessly looking after your children bringing them on the path of islam educate them remember educate them secularly as well as islamically both